So we all know that there is a problem with the gender balance in cybersecurity. We know that it's a very male dominated industry. Um, Crest ran a series of workshops in the summer of 2020, where we were asking participants about their experiences in recruitment and how we could change recruitment, make it better to try and address that gender gap. And we came up with some top tips to think about. Now, the first tip that our attendees came up with was looking at unconscious bias in your job adverts. There's some studies that have been done that have proven that when you have a gender coded job advert that has very masculine focused words, women are put off applying before you even get them to send their CV, send their application. Men, when it's a feminine coded job advert, don't seem to be put off as much. So balancing the feminine and masculine language that you use in your job adverts is a good step. And there are tools out there that can help you, like uh, the gender decoder. You can search for that on Google. The other thing to bear in mind is the difference in how men and women view lists of, of required skills on job adverts. Essential and non-essential skills are viewed slightly differently by men and women. If you list a whole bunch of essential qualifications and skills, a man will probably apply when he meets sort of 60% of those. A woman is much less likely to apply um, if she doesn't tick every single box that's on there. So have a real think about whether a skill or a qualification is essential or whether it's just desirable. And try to make sure that you're focusing on the things that are really important rather than things that might not be essential. Flexibility is a really important thing to consider. One size does not fit all. Promoting genuine flexible working is really important for attracting women. And by genuine flexible working, we mean flexible working that can be tailored to meet the needs of a specific individual, um, whoever they are, whatever their requirements are. It means you need to have a conversation with people and see what it is that they require in terms of accommodations and how you can meet that. It's a healthy thing to do for all businesses because it makes life better for all staff, but also it makes you more attractive when you're trying to bring women in. Focus on the positive that cybersecurity can do. A lot of the language we use in cybersecurity is very adversarial and not everybody wants to be in a war zone, particularly in schools when you're talking to younger women who might be thinking about this as a career. Emphasize the good that this industry does, the fact that we're protecting people and the fact that it is a positive and constructive area to work in. We often talk about uh, skills being hard or soft, and we have a tendency often to devalue soft skills. Skills such as good communication, report writing, customer care, um, communication, interpretation. These are often harder to learn or harder to teach than the technical skills that go alongside them in the cybersecurity marketplace. We need to value those skills that we call soft skills and make sure that they are properly uh, accounted for in how we value roles. The other thing that you can do is emphasize cybersecurity as a long-term career. It is a good career path. It's not just a job. When you get into cybersecurity, um, think about things like personal development, support and mentoring. And when you are selling a job, sell the career path as part of it. Lots of women want to see a career path rather than just a job that they can join one day with a salary and, and then not be developed. People want to be developed. They want to be invested in. Networking is a challenge that women have a lot. We all talk about um, networking events for women and, and getting women in cyber to talk to each other all the time. And that's great. But we need men to come to those events, too. We want mentoring for women, but we also want mentoring of women by men and mentoring of men by women. Segregation actually doesn't help either of us. We can't solve this problem by just women talking to women. We need men to get involved in this process as well. And the final thing, the final tip that came out of our workshops was making sure that you're not um, overcompensating when you're trying to recruit women. Women don't want to be recruited because they're women. They want to be recruited because they are good at what they do and because they have the skills that you need. Keep your language gender neutral. Keep a balance in there. Um, we don't want to make everything female focused. All we want is to lower the barriers and stop women being put off.